Hello and welcome back. So this is the last of the three series, three part uh, series of network interview questions. Uh, let's get started. First question, how does a packet travel from one network to another? Describe the journey in detail. This uh, I touched based in the last video. Uh, packet travels through routers and networks based on routing tables and protocols. The packet uh, the packet gets encapsulated, de-encapsulated, each, la each layer of the OSI model. So base here, you touch base some on OSI model, some of uh, Ethernet, MAC addresses, routers, and then de-encapsulate. Like how does it? So what happens is your application sends it down to presentation layer where uh, it needs to encrypt. Yes, it does not encrypt. It will just ASCII encoding, whatever. Send it down to your TCP or UDP. Like it uh, does it require a handshake or it's a stream that does not need. Go down to your IP address. IP address is at, it will get an IP address regardless. But if it's going from one computer to another computer within the same network, it won't go through the router. But uh, it will just go to your switch at, uh, uh, three and four that's your uh, uh, switch uh, sorry three is your router the second is uh, uh, four is your IP address three is your router second layer is your Ethernet so it will, it will go through your router and your Ethernet switch and it will determine where is it going if it's going to uh, a computer within the same network if from ethernet it will go physically to that computer but if it's going to another network it from ethernet uh it will depends if the ethernet is the interface is connected to upstream uh mo router modem whatever it will go over there if it's if it's gonna uh, if that router was the modem at well it won't go to uh anywhere else it will get to this next router and up on out so just learn the uh, how it works go watch a video get an explanation this, uh, remember this is an advanced question you need to know it in detail you need to go uh, read up on it and then explain it in your words uh, the for uh, the osi model plus how it travels and on the other end you will start about hey it comes out of your ethernet or yeah, fiber go to the modem router it will go up the router to your NIC card NIC will process uh, the ASCII encoding or encapsulation whatever uh, it, it will see and then refer it to the uh, appropriate application so NIC says hey okay yeah this is for me uh, does it have ASCII encoding go to this word processing does it have a, a encryption okay and in, it's for your email client send it to email client or your web browser that's how it an application be your chrome browser firefox your outlook uh, express or your uh, streaming app they will take care of it question number two can you explain how routers use routing tables to direct traffic so this is why remember when i say that you have to learn the uh, networking to, uh, topologies this is where it comes so the, these routers they share their routing table with each other like bgp ospf uh, lldp uh, they are all that are used for that router routers use routing tables to determine the best path for forwarding the packets these tables contain routing information to directly connected networks and remote networks so basically what happens is each router shares its routing table which consists of its neighbors with the other routers and that's how routers knows uh, where to send it how do you troubleshoot a slow network? What tools would you use? Troubleshooting a slow network involves checking for network congestion, hardware issues, and inefficient software and network configuration errors. Tools like Ping, Traceroute, Wireshark, Netstat can be used. Here, person example, I we all love to uh, do the speed test of on our ISPs. I did, I did that. Uh, my computer was acting funny. 
uh, in Windows, they, it has an option to auto negotiate. I knew that my connection is 500 uh, uh, MB and uh, I was not getting that. So that was frustrating. What I did was when I was running the speed test, I was just getting 70 or 80. Uh, when I went into my Ethernet adapter, that's where it was set to 100. I don't know how, what causing it, but I've uh, like fixed it, set it to one GB and everything was uh, cool. And when uh, I, I reboot, fixed it. So you just have to investigate like where the bottleneck is. In my case, the Ethernet adapter was set to 100 MB. That's why it was not getting traffic. The good thing is I have other computers where I trust, uh, speed test my internet and I knew that internet service from ISP is fine. It's, I have an issue in, in my local network. Uh, how do you uh, check for network uh, inside your network? You can use the Wireshark ping and trace route. You basically see if you have connectivity to a uh, device or not for example at my work uh, when we are doing dealing with network infrastructure that is entirely in a different building i have two options ping or walking all the way in that data hall right in front of the uh, that rack imagine which one i take i take ping uh, just the other day i uh, somebody was working five buildings away from me and for me to walk all the way over there literally takes 15 minutes. If I had to go uh, be with him right in front of the rack, it would take me 15 minutes of walk uh, from my desk. But ping, it took 10 seconds. Saves you a lot of time. Just learn these uh, things. So Wireshark, uh, you, you uh, capture packets, you analyze them. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. How can you secure a network? What protocols and measures would you recommend? So on a network like how you, it, it's kind of security related, like how would you secure it? Network security is all about firewalls. Uh, encryptions is more like, uh, not uh, network security, it's more like the data security, but the firewalls is the number one thing. You can add IDS and IPS. I do not like IDS. IDS just uh, uh, alert you. They don't take any action. IPS, on the other hand, uh, take an active step. They will block the traffic. They will uh, temporarily uh, change rules. So to keep blocking the traffic, modify it in a way that you don't have to come investigate and then block the traffic, IPS will do it for you. IDS is more in less expensive, so uh, it needs a human to read all those logs and then take actions. But it's uh, most of the time it's after the fact kind of uh, thing while IPS is real time. Software up to date is uh, pretty common, uh, like it's no brainer. Uh, strong authentication and monitoring of intrusions. Monitoring of intrusion is IDS. Uh, firewalls, they do log, but they are based just on rules. IDS is where as it's not only rules, it can, uh, it's, it has anomaly detection based on signatures and behavior. Question five, can you explain how MPLS work in a network? Multi-protocol label switching improves network performance by directing data from one network node to the next based on short path labels rather than long network addresses. So it's all about labeling like labels, just like in Gmail you have labels exactly like that. So it's, it just saves time on network addresses. What is SDN? How does it change traditional networking? Software-defined networking, very, very common in large networks, especially in data centers. It separates the control plane from the data plane. So basically, you are doing all of your networking through a software that defines your network, implements it, configure it, destroy it, discard it, and it's all programmatic. So you can do a program of how you want your network to be done, and it will be done. 
what is network virtualization what are its benefits so network virtualization virtualization combines all physical network equipment into a single software based resource its benefits include better scalability improved resource utilization and simplified man management so network virtualization uh, do you remember vlans it's on a broader scale so in this one it does not have to be limited to a single switch it uh, not even a single building in a loca geolocation it 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 can be uh, consist of multiple regions multiple cities across a continent you name it question number eight can you describe the difference between ids and ips exactly what i uh, talked before uh, ids just alerts you it detects does not take any action blocks it uh, if you have set up alerts it will just send you a beeper while IPS it takes an actual uh, step to thought that uh, attempt it will go for example uh, it, it will block the traffic it, it, it will block the IP address uh, it will shut down the port you name it Question number nine, how would you set up a secure Wi-Fi networks? Exactly the same thing, uh, uh, just like physical networks. Uh, our Wi-Fi are more vulnerable because you don't have to connect physically. They're just openly available and anybody can uh, connect to them. Setting up a secure Wi-Fi network involves using store, strong network encryption. Um, the WPA3 is now, it's it's on all of your newer devices it is there and i recommend using wpa3 rather than wpa2 changing default ssid and passwords of uh, home networks uh, when you get your um, device from your isp they have the defaults already printed over there just go change the ssid name change the password so nobody can connect uh, disabling wps wps is uh, you press the button and it connects it's old technology easily breakable enabling of firewall so you will uh, enable the firewall if you have one uh, if not I strongly recommend installing one uh, especially in today's age uh, you will be glad you did and keeping the firmware up to date so firmware like if the vendor detects there is a break there is a way to break their device they will update their firmware so get to the uh, latest firmware Question number 10, can you explain how load balancing works in networking? Uh, proxy server, your pro proxy server could be categorized as a load balancer, uh, but actual load balancer works in that you have basically more than one servers be, uh, uh, in, in the back end. And in front, there is a load balancer which uh, sends traffic to both of them. So there are multiple configuration, it could be uh, standby it could be round robins it could be uh, one both active so if the, they're both active they both will receive some uh, request each uh, it, the load balancer will divide uh, if there is a standby so what happens is there is a heartbeat involved uh, where it it keeps detecting if the primary server is up and running good if it goes down for maybe three seconds uh, the load balancer will start sending <laughs> the standby will go live the load balancer will read out all the traffic to the secondary server in a uh, round robin there are multiple servers and they will each get their next request like the first server is responding to customer one uh, second request goes to uh, server two three four five whatever the number of uh, uh, servers is and it just keeps goes in a cycle uh, you reverse uh, uh, lo load balancing is when there are backend servers database servers that they will be involved with so database servers they don't get uh, bogged down with all the traffic all right so these are the 10 questions of advanced level i hope this video has helped you if it has please rate comment subscribe and share and i see you in the next one